Ginseng is undoubtedly one of the most famous herbal medicines on the planet because it truly is one of nature's great adaptogenic substances. Now even the, the genus name Panax is derived from the Latin word panacea, which you know essentially is meaning that ginseng has the capacity to heal just about anything. Now it has been revealed through scientific analysis that ginseng contains 36 different types of ginsenicide saponins, which are widely believed to be the primary reason why it has such a balancing effect on us at such a fundamental level, but in truth, you know, there's always so much more to natural healing plant substances than just merely reducing them down to their biological constituents. Ginseng has a particular affinity for the lungs, the spleen, and the heart, and it has a kind of bi-directional action on the central nervous system, the immune system, the endocrine system, and on blood pressure as well. So it's really a medicine that is behaving according to our own personal circumstances. So it's always trying to um, create a state of holistic balance within the individual that's consuming it, no matter how different our personal circumstances may be. Ginseng is one of the premier qi tonics in Chinese herbalism, so it supports the spleen and the entire digestive system, and it really enhances the circulation of that subtle qi, or that pranic energy, throughout the complex meridian system of the body. Now, ginseng also regulates respiratory function, and it really increases our lung capacity, and as a natural analgesic, it can offer really quite genuine pain relief through relaxing muscle tissue and soothing irritated nerves as well. And as is characteristic of pretty much all the other adaptogens, ginseng works directly with the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, or the HPA axis, in regulating hormonal balance which really goes some way towards explaining why it is so amazing at helping us adapt to various different kinds of stress. Traditionally, it was used to increase libido and to improve the quality of sleep and enhance physical endurance and promote vitality and longevity. However, the reason why ginseng has become so renowned throughout the ages is because of the very profound impact that it can have over the mind and the emotions and how that can affect us spiritually. Ginseng has been revered as a spirit herb for millennia due to its capacity to open the heart. Now obviously the heart from a more subtle energetic perspective is largely considered in the East at least to be the seat of our consciousness. Now, ginseng can have a very powerful effect on broadening our field of perception and actually allowing a much more inclusive experience that's far less bothered by the turbulence of duality. And in doing that, it can really create uh, a mental experience that's a lot more still, a lot more grounded, a lot more open, and a lot more spacious, even in the face of stress. Now, the first recorded mention of ginseng apparently dates back about 9,000 years ago, uh, and since then, and probably a long time before that as well, it, it's been regarded as, like, the ultimate natural treasure, to the point where extreme, violent, large-scale wars have been fought many times over on the land where wild ginseng has been growing. Now, ginseng has been considered for millennia to be a very highly intelligent plant. It's considered to be a very sentient plant. And it's often referred to as man root. One reason for that is probably because, like I said, it's considered to be very, very sentient and much akin to, you know, the, the human kind of spirit. In another way, it's because of the appearance of it, because it has kind of limb-like roots growing out of it that really resemble human arms and legs and, you know, the head poking out of the, the top of the root where the plant actually grows above ground. So throughout the ages, ginseng has been observed to be a very shy and reclusive plant in the wild that was always attempting to evade human contact by growing in really dangerous and hard-to-access places. And it apparently even reacts to noise 
It's very sensitive to noise and it, it basically closes up. It closes the flowers and really tries to blend in more to its surroundings. So ginseng hunters discovered that it was almost impossible to find during daylight hours. So they would turn to hunting it at night because apparently the mature wild ginseng plants were considered to be so powerful that they would emit light. They were basically bioluminescent. And this light could be detected as a very subtle glow in the darkness. So hunters would, would shoot colored arrows in the direction of this ginseng glow, and they'd return the following morning to retrieve their arrows and locate the rare and mystical ginseng hermit. But if we fast forward to modern times, it's clear to see that the global ginseng industry has become absolutely enormous. And there's many different types of cultivated ginseng on the market, like North Korean red ginseng, South Korean red ginseng, Chinese red ginseng, American ginseng, white ginseng, there's Siberian ginseng, which is not actually a true ginseng because it's not part of the same plant family. But some of these can be very, very potent and others a bit less so. And their properties really vary due to differing climates and growing conditions and different methods of processing and of course the age of the roots. Now some of the different varieties have different gradings too so the potency and the cost of a single type of ginseng can actually vary quite a lot. Now the red varieties are considered to be a lot more yang a lot more expansive and a lot more hot energetically speaking whereas the white ginseng is considered to be considerably less potent, but a lot more yin in its energetic nature. Now also the Asian varieties of ginseng are generally more yang, whereas the American ginseng actually has a lot more of a yin quality to it. Plus there's a massive, massive amount of counterfeit ginseng in the global marketplace. And, you know, in truth, the overwhelming majority of commercially available ginseng has not reached a basic level of maturity at all. And this is really very important because ginseng doesn't begin to exhibit its adaptogenic properties until it's at least eight years old. And because in the wild, you know, it grows in very hostile conditions and it actually takes at least this many years before the plant has learned to successfully adapt to its environment, you know, at which point it becomes a lot more chemically balanced and a lot more firmly established within its ecosystem. So it evolves like this again once it reaches its teens, once it's like 12, 13, 14 years old, where it matures into an even more powerful and much more balanced substance that contains noticeably more of that shen or that mind-spirit medicine, you know, when you consume it. So it just, it really just continues on this trajectory so that the older it gets, the more potent and precious it becomes. And obviously it comes with a much heftier price tag the older it becomes. Now one wild root that was harvested, I don't remember when it was harvested, but it was estimated to be at the time of harvest at least 400 years old and it was sold in an auction, I think it was sold somewhere in the US, for a, around about one and a half million dollars. So obviously there's many different types of ginseng available, but it's the truly mature wild roots that are the most highly prized because they're considered to be infinitely superior to even the best cultivated roots on the market. And it's the wild ginseng, the aged wild ginseng that contains the, the highest capacity for that mind, spirit, and shen energy, which, to be honest, you know, that's something that when you consume wild ginseng that's mature enough, it's undeniable. The experience is absolutely, there's nothing else like it. Now, I've got some wild ginseng roots here. These are 15 years old. They're from the Changbai Mountain region in northeast China, which is the that's the source of the best ginseng in the world. And since consuming these roots, since actually, you know, working with this type of ginseng, which I have been for a while now, I've had some remarkable experiences. The first time 
I ever consumed this 15 year old wild ginseng. I ate some, I ate half of one of the roots. I just ate it raw like that. And then I decocted about two or three of them and made a tea out of them and I drank you know, a couple of cups of that tea, and this was all in the space of an evening over, you know, a couple of hours prior to going to bed. Now, I did a meditation practice that night before going to sleep, and it was one of the best meditations that I'd, I'd experienced in a very long time. Now, I went to sleep really easily. I had literally the best sleep that I've had in over 10 years that night, and I found, because I practiced lucid dreaming, and though I didn't actually have any kind of vivid dream with lucidity, I actually found myself to be meditating in my sleep with lucidity, with full lucidity. I was actually just concentrating on my breath, and I was fast asleep, and I was in that state of meditation for a considerable amount of time, and I actually woke up in the middle of the night feeling unbelievable. I'd had probably about four or five hours sleep. I felt just utterly amazing. So light and vibrant and just awesome, awesome sensation. And I went back to sleep straight away and I woke up a few hours later feeling exactly the same. So that effect actually lasted for days. I didn't actually consume it again and again and again. I left some time for the experience to sink in, and I actually found that that experience in its full potency extended for a few days' time. But in reality, you know, traces of that medicine would have remained with me probably for many weeks or months even. Uh, so it's a remarkable medicine. I've had many other experiences just like that, but that's how powerful this particular type of ginseng can be. If it's wild and it's old enough, it can have an instant impact on you in the, in the most amazingly positive way. But obviously that's my experience with consuming really high quality wild ginseng. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same for everybody, but of course when you're consuming ginseng of this high grade, it is very common that people have these kinds of experiences. That's how ginseng got this reputation as being such a powerful mind, spirit, shen tonic. Um, you know, some people may notice these experiences immediately. Other people may feel like they need to familiarize themselves with ginseng more. They may need to deepen their relationship with it before it fully reveals itself to them. But important to remember, these effects are not short-lived. They actually do last a considerable amount of time, way beyond the initial moment of consuming the ginseng. And these benefits are cumulative as well. So what most people notice is that they don't get used to the ginseng. You know, their body and mind don't become tired of it or bored with it or it just doesn't work anymore. You know, if you're consuming the right quality, it's just, it's cumulative. It continues to build momentum. You know, you continue to feel it. So it's just such a powerful medicine. But the only truly important thing to take away, I think, is the quality. When you're looking to buy ginseng, you're looking to consume it, you want to make sure that it's it's got to be old enough. It's got to be at least seven or eight years old, if not older, preferably in its teens, preferably quite away into its teens, or just the older the better. But the thing is, the older it, it is, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, wild is always going to be the best option, but again, that always comes with a larger price tag to it. But basically speaking, what you want to remember is ginseng should have a very strong aroma to it. Now, this, this has a divine aroma. It's, it smells delicious. It tastes delicious. This aroma fills the entire room, and that's the sign of a ginseng that's going to be very potent. If you have a ginseng that's very pale in color, it doesn't really have much aroma, it doesn't really taste that great, then chances are it's not going to be very strong and it's not going to provide many of these benefits that we're discussing. So, you know, it's, it's really so important, but I would say that truly wild, mature ginseng 
is definitely in my personal top three tonic herbs of all time. 